So you finally passed your state exam. You've been studying for all this time. Congratulations. But now you're wondering what's the next step. That's it. You're a real estate agent. Congratulations. You've done it. You're in. You're in your new career. Your license as of right now is current, but inactive. In order to activate it, you have to pick a broker. Um, so you already know the common questions. What's your split? Do you offer training? How often is the training? But a couple questions you may not know. Can you get paid at closing? Some offices will make you bring the check to them. They'll deposit it. You got to wait for it to clear. Then they cut you your check three or four days later. Then you got to wait for it to clear. Um, most other brokerages, such as mine, the Investment Property Gurus in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we let you get paid at closing. How that works is we'll send a CDA, a commission disbursement authorization to the title company a day before closing. Um, it outlines what your split is what the company's portion is. That way they can cut two checks at closing for this brokerage. They'll cut one for the office itself and one for you to take at closing. Some title companies will also let you get a wire transfer. That way your funds are in your account that same day or the next morning, depending on what time you close. When it comes to commission splits, an average would be 10% to 25%. The scale tips based on how much training they offer you, how much hands-on stuff they do, what, how many offices they have. Basically, the more convenient, the bigger the split. But the catch is you don't want a split that's too high to where they're just asking for it to ask for it and they're not doing anything for you. Before you get into the technical questions, the first thing you want to notice about a brokerage is are you comfortable there? When you walk in the office, do you feel as though you're at home? Do you feel that you could really have a meaningful conversation with any of these people? Um, do they seem relatable? Do they seem, do, do you feel like you'll have a good time at company parties, at company picnics? If you walk in and it just feels like another day at the office, you feel like you're going into work every day, it's not worth it. After a while, I, I'll admit some most realtors stop going to the office because all you really need is a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. But the moments you are there, when you're there for trainings, when you're there for meetings, when you're there for company gatherings, you want to be around people you like and feel like you're going to be there for a few years. Even then, the aesthetics of the office itself, do you feel comfortable in there? Is it in an area you're comfortable in? Would you feel comfortable having a client meet you there? That's very important and a very overlooked step. Once you've picked the office you're happy with as far as the look and the feel of the place, there's some more technical questions you want to ask. Do they offer leads perhaps? Granted, your, your broker isn't solely responsible for your success as a real estate agent. It's still nice to know if they have some type of systems lined up to bring leads in the door. Even if it's a system you can replicate yourself, a system is a system. And when the leads do come in the door, what happens to them? Is there a system to distribute them amongst agents? Or is it just first come, first serve, whoever's next to the broker at the time gets the lead? Can they teach you how to get leads? You want to know that the broker or whoever's in charge of training is up to date on the latest trends. So if there's certain ideas that you yourself want to try out and they have no idea what this is or how this works, maybe you're in the wrong place. You definitely want to be somewhere where they can coach you get to where you want to be. For example, when I joined my first office, it was a very small company. Um, it had about 12 agents at the time. By the end of the year, it was up to 40 agents. And I really learned a lot because I knew that my goal was to eventually be a, a broker owner of a small brokerage to eventually grow it to a larger office. What better way to do that than to work under a broker doing the exact same thing that you yourself plan to do? I just opened the Investment Property Gurus in January 2020. Uh, we're growing and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm following what I've seen over the years. I'm putting into play these systems and I'm just innovating. I'm hiring experienced, motivated agents. If you have questions about my company and want to know more, my information is in the bottom. But as of right now, I'm going to stick to the script. You want to make sure you can build with this company. Some brokers will allow you to build a company within the company. Um, can you do property management? Your license allows you to do it. Does your broker? If you see yourself having a team of agents under you, but don't want the headache of office rent and just owning a company and all that extra crap that comes with it, you can just stay where you are, make sure your broker allows you to recruit agents, have a commission split structure with them and the broker that works for everyone. And you can be on your way owning your own team with your own logo, own company name, just powered by your, your broker. Another really important tip, not so much a question, don't lose sight of your personal brand. 
Um, when people are hiring you, they're hiring you, not the broker. So even though you're with a big name brand company, that's not the big picture. They want to know that their agent can handle it. They want to know that you understand that they need you more than you need them. It's really important to not use the company email address. Um, number one, if the office closes down, such as my first brokerage did, or number two, if you switch companies, all those emails sent to that old email address are going to get lost forever. Um, you can't reroute it. If you do reroute it, after a while, the company's going to remove you from their roster and the email address is just going to no longer exist. So it's really important to stick to your Gmail, stick to your Yahoo mail, stick to your ask, whatever you have now, just make a new one, make something unique to you and just make sure it's something that can follow you through your career so you can keep track of all these emails from the start of your career to the end. Take it from me. I had to start all over, get all new contacts. It sucked, it took a while, and it did set me back. If you wanna be a realtor and don't know where to start, the first step is to take the course. You can do it online at realestateexpress.com. If you need a discount code, I have one in the link below. If you took your course and are ready for the state exam, I highly recommend this book, this Barron's Real Estate Exams. It's really good, really helpful. I have a video outlining how to do it. I'll put a link to the video and the book itself Below. This is my podcast studio I built in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's called the AV Club. You can find it on Instagram at the AV Club Podcast Studios. I rent this space out to anyone who wants to do a podcast or YouTube video. Anything you'd want to do creative wise, audio books, anything like that, you can come here and it's rented out by the hour. If you're looking for a brokerage to hang your license and you're in the South Florida area, my company does specialize in investment real estate. Give us a shout. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Feel free to reach out to me. Do not be shy. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'll see you on the next one.